For this next piece, I'd like to welcome Fiona Tyndall and Anton Guriev to join us. So, Thomas More was a Dublin man. He was born in Dublin in 1798. And he was born to a Catholic family. And his father was a grocer. And they were lucky enough to be able to send him to be educated in an English grammar school. And he was a writer, he was a poet, he was a lyricist, but he was mainly um, celebrated for his melodies. So he was educated in Trinity College in Dublin, and after that, after he got his B Bachelor of Arts, he moved to London to study law. But he really advanced socially because of his singing, and he sang for the English aristocracy and for very eminent people like the Prince of Wales. And he was, he got into all the big houses in London, the important houses, and he was invited into all the best drawing rooms. So in 18, between 1803 and 1830, he started writing English verse and he collected old Irish folk tunes and he put his verse to those melodies and they were known as Moore's melodies and I'm going to sing one of those for you now. It's called Silent O'Moyle but it's also known as the Song of Fanula and Fanula was one of the children of Lear and she had three brothers and her father, their father adored them and his wife died and he remarried a woman called Aoife. And Eva was very jealous of the love that her husband, Lear, had for his children. So he cast a spell on them and he turned them into swans. And she banished them to, she cast a spell on them and banished them to live out their lives for 900 years on the River Moyle or until the bell tolled and Christianity came to Ireland. So this is the song of Fanula, the very sorrowful and mournful song of Fanula.
this next piece was also written by Thomas Moore, and he was, as I said, a, a student in Trinity College, and he had obviously a lot of friends there, but he was friends with a lot of revolutionaries who fought in the 1798 rebellion. It was a rebellion against the crown and against the government of the time, and it was a failed rebellion. So a lot of his friends died, were killed, including Robert Emmett, who he was very friendly with, who was hanged at the gallows. And he wrote this piece for them. It's called The Minstrel Boy. The minstrel boy to war is gone. In the ranks of death, you'll find him. His father's sword he had girded on, and his wild harp slung behind him. Land of song, cried the warrior bard, though all the world betrays thee, one sword at least thy rights shall guard, one faithful harp shall praise thee. The minstrel fell, but the foeman's chain could not bring that proud soul under. The harp he loved ne'er spoke again, for he tore its cords asunder, and said, no chains shall sully thee, Thou soul of love and bravery, thy songs were made for the pure and the free. They shall never sound in slavery. 